Hey everyone, today we are going to be talking about fear and worry, what that can do to us. A man in the Bible who suffered with anxiety and worry and fear, what happened to him, and what the Bible says that we can do about it. The book of Job, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5 reads, There was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect or blameless and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance or possession also was seven thousand sheep and three thousand camels, and five hundred yoke of oxen, and five hundred female donkeys, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sanctified them, and rose up early in the morning, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Job, this perfect upright man, he was a father, he had a lot of possessions, he was married, and he was one of the wealthiest, the, it, the Bible says it like this, he was the greatest of all the men of the East. When Job's children got together and they were partying and drinking and doing all the things, Job was concerned that they may have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Many of us are parents and we can understand that feeling that you don't want your child to go against the laws of God and the, the things that God has put in place for us as his children to abide by. The difference is when, we're, when our concern begins to be worry and it weighs on us and it becomes fear, then we become tormented and worry takes over more than faith. And that becomes our thought process is what are they doing now? Are they doing things that God would be pleased with? And you continuously have your mind on what if, what if, what if. The book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. It says, be careful or anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. We can go directly, boldly into the throne room where we will find our help in time of need. And so we do not need to worry and we do not need to fret or consistently think about negative thoughts. Job was tormented because he could not imagine having his children rebel against God and them be lost. Many of us that are Christian mothers and fathers want our children to serve the Lord, to love him. But there are so many distractions in the world today. There are so many other things taking their time, their attention, their thoughts their behaviors in creating these ideas in their heart and in their minds of they can be sufficient on their own they don't need god there's more than one way that's just narrow-minded to think it's just jesus and him only but the bible tells us that it is only through jesus that we are saved there's no other way jesus said any other way is the way of a thief and a robber so what does the Bible tell us then about worrying and what what does it warn us against? We're in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, starting in verse 25, reading down to 34. These are the words of Jesus, they are the words in red. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat or food, and the body than raiment or clothing? 
Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, or worrying, can add one cubit unto his stature or height? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God in his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil or trouble thereof. Jesus doesn't want us to be worried about our future. He doesn't want us to be worried about tomorrow. He wants us to be present right now, right where we are. Jesus said, who can actually get taller by worrying it doesn't make you taller. It doesn't change your circumstances, in other words. I've heard it said that worrying is like being in a rocking chair. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't get you anywhere. It's not a productive use of your time to be worrying and fretting and being concerned about all of the things that the world cares about. The first thing that we should be doing is having our mind on God, on His righteousness. How can we live more holy lives? And when we seek God in His righteousness, in His kingdom, in His agenda, in His plans, in His purposes for our lives, then everything else that we need is going to come. But we have to first be in the right heart posture because if we are still bent on our flesh and worrying and considering the things of, that the world considers and we just can't stop worrying things that we often are worrying about and fearful of we may never see them it may never happen so instead of being fearful we need to be faithful we need to fill ourselves up with faith, increase our faith. How do we get more faith? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We must be reading our Bibles and praying and seeking God because we can do a lot more in our life, impact more people, touch more lives, reach more souls, by living for God and seeking His way, His plan, and His direction for our lives than we ever could sitting and worrying and being fearful. So we are going to go back to Job and get another glimpse of how he is fear-driven. The book of Job, chapter 3, verses 25 and 26. This is Job speaking, and he said, For the thing which I greatly feared has come upon me, and that which I was afraid of is come unto me. I was not in safety, neither had I rest, neither was I quiet, yet trouble came. Job said, the very thing that I was worrying about, the very thing that I was afraid of, happened. He dwelled on it. He continued to fill his mind with thoughts of what if and oh my goodness until the day came that he said well i knew this would happen i was afraid of it and it did it happened he said i wasn't at rest 
I didn't have any peace. My soul wasn't quiet inside. I was a nervous wreck. I just considered all the things that could happen. And I was fearful. And trouble came this world. Jesus said this. You will have trouble. That's not a very encouraging message, is it? But it's so important that we understand trouble will come. We live in a fallen world, a very sinful world, a wicked, evil world. Trouble is coming. Worrying does not help. It can bring sickness. You can get an ulcer. You can have stomach pains. You can get nauseous. You can start to develop anxiety. You can even go into depression. Fear brings torments. Fear is not of God. We read in 1 Timothy that he said, it has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. God doesn't want us to be in turmoil like that. He does not want us to live our lives that way. A Christian who is following hard after God should not be filling their days with worry and turmoil and feelings of doom and gloom and disaster. In fact, if you are feeling those things on a day-to-day -day basis and more often than not, you're tormented with what if and worry and doubt and fear and grief, you need to check your heart and, and look back to the scriptures where it says that we are to be anxious for nothing, but we are to bring our requests and our prayers and the things we're worried about and discouraged about. We are to bring them to the Lord with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving and let our requests be made known to God. He is our source of help. He is our source of strength. We can either look at the problem and fixate on that, or we can look at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, our one solution. And we can rest in him knowing that he will take care of all of our needs. Or we can worry and be afraid. We're going to 1 John chapter 4. Starting with verse 15 and going through 21. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath or involves torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hateth his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? And this commandment have we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. We read in the scriptures that fear involves torment. You know that if you've worried about anything, you're concerned about anything. You become fearful. It will cause you to be paralyzed at some points in your life. You won't even go do things that you would have otherwise done because you're afraid. We noticed when the pandemic came, a lot of people were, before they were told they couldn't, were not going out. They weren't allowing visitors. They were even estranged from family members because they just were so afraid they were going to get something that would cause them to be very sick and that they would die. But the good news is that perfect love casts out fear. And the perfect love is God. God is love. 
it's not something that he does only, it's also who he is. It's a character trait of God. We can live in fear and torment, or we can walk with God and put our trust in him. Let God be the focus of our thoughts. Every time we come up with a problem, we need to recognize it and say, stop. I'm not going to be worried about this. I can't worry about it because I don't know what to do, but God does and he's my heavenly father and he has the answer. He is the solution to my problem. And I promise you, if you put your hand in his and you walk with him and you trust him and you lean on him and you learn who he is, you will be free from this fear and this torment because he did not give us a spirit of fear. Take every single thought captive and pray about it. I had this thought come to me the other day and at first it scared me and I was getting a little nervous and then I stopped and I said, God, is this thought from you? Did you give me this thought? It immediately left me, and so did that dread and that feeling. Hold it up before the Lord and say, Is this something you want me to be dwelling on, Lord? He tells us in Philippians what to think about. Things that are good and honest and pure and just and lovely. If they have a good report, anything praiseworthy, think on these things. What are you putting in here? Whatever you're watching and reading and listening to, you're putting here and in your heart. If you're listening to the news and you're watching reports of war and murder and the evils of this world, if that's what you're just constantly feeding into your mind and your soul and your spirit, then it is no wonder that you're living in torment. If you are reading the word of God, if you've shut out all the outside noises and you're only bringing in things that are honorable and good and praiseworthy, it is no wonder you're living in peace, that you have joy, that you can smile and people are like, how does he do that? How does she do that? Do you know what they're going through and they still smile? They still have peace? My dad was dying with cancer and we still had peace. We still had the joy of the Lord. He was our strength and our ever-present help in our time of need. We leaned on him heavily, but what a shame, what a slap in the face if once he healed my dad or once he took my dad, that we just walked away and just lived whatever way we wanted. God is our father. He wants to have a relationship with each and every one of his children love him learn about him i encourage you to read through the scriptures i've shared today study them deeper ask holy spirit tell me father what you would want me to know and holy spirit will literally that is indwelling in you if you are a child of the most high god and the bible says holy spirit won't speak of himself in the book of john saint john chapter 6 verse 12 and then verse 13 these are the words of jesus they are in red and jesus said this i have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now how be it when he the holy spirit that's who he's talking about here how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you into all truth for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. We have that spirit of truth living inside of us. And if we will weigh everything against that, holding it up, Holy Spirit, give me discernment. Teach me, show me. What is it that I need to hear and learn about this? Is this of you, God? Try the spirits and see if they're of God. Because 
not everything is. Do not worry, do not fear, do not doubt. Only believe, trust in Jesus because he has a powerful, wonderful work to do in you and through you and for you. He wants to partner with you in this life that you're living. He doesn't want you sitting around worrying, being fearful, fretting, losing quality time, worried and fearful, alone and isolated. That's not his plan for you. I hope something I've shared today has been strength for your journey and light for your way. God bless you.